Do you want to extract useful information from a text file, a website, or the output of a command line tool? This can be done with regular expressions in PowerShell. In this episode, we're going to look at an introduction to regular expressions and a few different ways of using them with PowerShell. We're going to use the operators match and replace, as well as the command select string. All these supports regular expressions, just like the split operator that we looked at in episode 7. To better understand how we can use these tools, we're going to start with a short primer on regular expressions. But first, a few words from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by ScriptRunner, the number one for PowerShell management. ScriptRunner is a great solution to centrally manage PowerShell scripts, standardize and automate IT tasks, or make scripts accessible via a graphical user interface for help desk and end users. Especially if you work for a larger company, ScriptRunner might be interesting for you. For more information, visit scriptrunner.com or follow the link in the description below. In episode 7, we tried to split a string on a dot. We then realized that the dot was a special character in regular expression and that it needs to be escaped with a backslash. These are all the special characters that we need to escape when working with regular expressions. Any other character will match as they are typed. If I am ever uncertain of what to escape, there is a method that can do that for me. Just give it any string and it will be escaped properly. There are also a whole lot of special sequences that we can use to match any character within a set of characters. A few examples that I often use are, for example, backslash s, which will match any whitespace character, backslash w, which will match any word character, basically any letter, digit, or uh, underscore in any language, or backslash d, which will match any digit in any language, not just 0 to 9. And last but not least, a set of brackets, which represents a custom character group that will match any character within the brackets. For example, putting A, B, C, 1, 2, 3 within brackets will match an A, B, or a C, or any number between 1 and 3. We can also use ranges of characters here. So writing A-C or 1-3 is the same as writing a, b, c, or 1, 2, 3. All of these can also be negated by using an uppercase letter or by starting the custom group with a caret character. So backslash uppercase s will, for example, match anything that is not the white space. And putting a um, caret character before a to c within a custom character group will match anything that is not an a, b, or c. Each character or special sequence in a pattern can be matched one or many times. This is controlled by something called quantifiers. The quantifiers I find the most useful are star, that will match zero or more times, plus, that will match one or many times. And then we can put numbers within braces. A two will match exactly two times, a two comma will match at least two times, and two comma five will match between two and five times. The last thing I want to cover is called sub-expressions. If we put anything inside parentheses within our pattern, that part will be marked as a sub-expression. When doing a match or replace, each sub-expression will be captured as a group that we can later extract. Let's look at an example. One of my favorite tools for working with regular expressions is the homepage regex101. It lets me insert the text in the lower box and type a regular expression in the upper field. I'll enter a line I got in the output from netstat in the lower box. Now let's try to use a regular expression to find the IP address on this line. First we want to find a set of digits. Since we're not trying to check if an address is valid, we're just trying to find it, we'll search for one, two, or three digits followed by a dot. A digit is represented by backslash d, and to look for between one and three, we we'll use a quantifier of one comma three within braces followed by a dot, which needs to be escaped with a backslash. The tool now shows several matches, and we can see an explanation of our pattern to the right. If we repeat the pattern, we can match a full IP address in one match. To make the pattern match the whole string, we first add a parenthesis around the pattern, and then we add a backslash capital D, followed by an asterisk, to match anything in the beginning of the string that is not a number. And then we add a dot and an asterisk, to the end to match any character until the end of the string. The colors now show us that the IP address is captured in group 1. This technique can be used to extract the IP address from the string. I hope this was a good introduction to regular expressions. Now we're going back to PowerShell to look at a few tools where we can use this pattern.
In PowerShell, the primary command for searching text using regular expressions is called select string. It works a little bit like grep in bash, and it can be used to search both files and pipeline output. I usually use it by piping either text or file path to select string. Let's try our previous example. As you can see by the highlight, the pattern matched the IP address. Select string also gives us a bit more information about our match. To have a look at that, we'll save the output in a variable that we can pipe to format list. Here we can see the configuration used. More information about what matched our pattern can be found in the matches property. Here we can see that we have captured the value of our IP address and that we can use $match.matches.value to access just the IP address. Select string can also be used to search several files for a pattern by, for example, piping the output of the get child item to select string. Here we search for each occurrence of write warning in any PS1 file in our current directory. Since we're not actually using any regular expression syntax here, we can add a parameter dash simple match to search for the exact text. This way we don't need to think about having to escape anything. If we want a bit more context, we can use the parameter dash context to, for example, output two lines before and after each line with a match. We can also use the parameter dash vo to get select string to output only the matching lines as text instead of outputting match information objects. This is handy when we just want to get all the lines that matches our search pattern. Two other ways I often use regular expressions in PowerShell is by using the operators match and replace. We'll start by having a look at match, which works a lot like select string. We'll put our string to the left and the pattern to the right of the operator, like this. This time we use the pattern that matches the full string, not just the IP address. As we can see here, if we have one string to the left, the match operator returns true if there is a match and false otherwise. If we have more than one string to the left of the operator, match will instead work like a filter and only return the matching strings. Each time the operator match searches a single string and finds a match, it will populate the automatic variable $matches. $matches is a hash table that always contains the key zero, which will store the entire match. Since our pattern uses a parenthesis that creates a capture group, anything matches by the pattern within the parenthesis will be stored in the key one. This is where we'll find our IP address. If we have many capture groups, keeping track of which group has which number can be a bit hard. Then we can name our groups by putting a question mark followed by a name in angular brackets in the beginning of a parenthesis, like this. Now the IP address will be stored using the key IP. Now let's have a look at the replace operator. Replace takes two parameters, first a pattern and then a substitute. Just like with match, replace will search for the pattern, but instead of returning a result and potentially populating a variable, replace will replace anything matched by the pattern with the substitute and return the result. First, we'll have a look at how we can mask the IP address in our string by replacing it with a generic string of asterisks. Since we only want to replace the IP address, we'll use the pattern that only matches the IP address. Here we get a string back, but the numbers in the IP address is masked by asterisks. We can also use replace to extract the IP address from the string. This time we use the pattern that matches the full string and writes $1 as a substitute. This may look a bit confusing, but regular expressions use dollar signs to represent the capture group. The number one represents the parentheses in our pattern. If we want, we can name the group just like we did with the match operator. As you can see here, the capture group is now named IP and we can access it in our substitute by writing dollar, open brace, IP and close brace. Remember that the substitution string is not PowerShell, so we need to use single quotes so PowerShell won't try to interpret the dollar sign. A nifty trick when using the replace operator in PowerShell 6 or later is that we can use a script block as a substitute. Inside the script block, the automatic variable dollar underscore will contain a match object. Here is an example where the pattern backslash b period will match the first character of every word and replace it with its uppercase variant. Have you used regular expressions for something useful? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. That was all for this time. I hope I'll see you next time. And until then, keep automating.